Now, deciding what to plant is the first thing. And this is a mix of, uh, and you'll see this trend throughout the rest of the slides, it's a mix of economic and environmental uh, aspects to the question. So environmental, this is a decision for people in the Midwest who generally will grow mostly corn and soybeans. If you go down into the Mississippi Delta region, you may have uh, cotton as well. If you go into Louisiana, you could have sugarcane. And so the decisions become more complex, but we're trying to make this a simpler uh, explanation. So let's consider corn and soybeans. In it, and for example, maybe um, in this year, soybeans are more profitable on a per acre basis than corn. Well, a farmer still has fixed costs he has to cover. Corn generally will have higher revenues than soybeans will. So he has to grow a certain amount of corn uh, so that he can cover his fixed costs while still making profit on his soybeans. And additionally, you'll have some rotational uh, questions, which will kind of bring us into our next slide, which is you have to think about where to plant uh, your portfolio, quote unquote, of soybeans and corn. So maybe you want 40% uh, in corn and 60% in soybeans. You may not be, uh, your fields may not allow you to do that. Um, and that's purely because of how does, uh, how well does the, let's say you have 100 fields, how well do those match up with the crops that you want to grow? So on the right, you have a soil uh, triangle. And this is the different types of soil. So clay generally has uh, smaller particles and it will hold water and nutrients better than a sand on the bottom left, which has larger particles and drains water more effectively. And silt is a little bit of a mix between the two. So clay is more favored in the Midwest because it's going to hold more water and nutrients. In uh, the Mississippi Delta, where there's more water available, um, it's generally not as favored. A sandy dirt is uh, is preferred because, or a sandy loam, because it will hold some nutrients, but also let water drain off. Um, and also you can grow cotton in the area and cotton, which grows primarily throughout the lower Mississippi Delta region. And Texas prefers a, um, prefers a sandier type of soil. And then on the left, you have a map of a field. And this is just to show you that one field may not necessarily be only one type of soil. And so a farmer has to decide, well, what's the majority of this soil on this farm and does it fit the crop that I want to put there? So uh, moving to the next slide, you have deciding where to, uh, when to plant. Now, there are two aspects to this. The first you see um, when to plant is, uh, is when you have certain windows in which you can Think about planting. So let's call it a 30 day window to plant corn. Well, you may see on your forecast that it's going to rain in one day. Do you, can you get your full field planted before it rains and is that effective? Um, or it may have rained 10 days ago and 60% uh, of your field is dry. Do you want to plant that 60% and wait and hopefully the next 40% be dry by the time you finish? Um, there's a lot of considerations within a small weather window. And then what you are seeing here is the first leaf appearance in spring. Now, this is primarily to show you the different climates that you have throughout the U.S. Um, these climates will, if you move the, the uh, months forward about two months, that's when most people will start planting in those different regions. And so they have to consider what are the planting windows that I can fit in for my different crops. And then also, as a last point, the crops will uh, have different planting windows. So corn may be planted late or earlier than cotton. Um, and then some may match up. So cotton and rice may have to be harvested um, at the same time. And what you're really having to think about as a farmer is what does my portfolio look like, but also how do I mandle, manage the logistics in season? So that brings us to our last slide that I will have, which is a crop production plan. Now, this is a lot of information and it looks uh, pretty intimidating, but what you're actually seeing is replicated in, in fairly similar basis um, throughout any given region. And it's just simple trips across the field to say, these are the things I have to do to grow my crop. Now, 
uh, again, there are two different types of things that a farmer will manage here. One is uh, how do I think about my cost structure in this? So, and there are certain levers you can and cannot manage. So in this particular budget and plan, um, fertilizer is about 37% of your expenses here. Uh, you can push that up or draw it down some. Harvest is 20%. Well, that's not something that you can alter a whole lot. Um, it's just a, a large expense uh, and you have to take your crop out of the field. So within each plan, there are certain levers, but some are really non-negotiable. Um, really, again, this is much more simple than it seems. What you will, uh, an important reminder though, is that this is all considerations the farmer is doing. And we, we try to make sure that we find farmers who are the best at making these decisions because um, ultimately we want them to be partners for a long time and how we get paid is simply rent from a farm.